Well, here we go again. Off to photograph some birds. Loading up the gear, checking the batteries. Same song and dance nearly every weekend. Nearly every weekend for eight years now. That's right, eight years of photographing birds. Today's not a special occasion. I'm not hoping to find something rare or even spectacular. It is spring migration and that's good. However, I'm gonna go photograph a bird that I've already photographed about a dozen times. Why, you might ask? Why would I wake up at 6 a.m., pack the car with all this gear and go find a bird that I photographed a dozen times? Yeah, I wish I knew. I really wish I had an answer for that. I think it comes down to this. Enough is never enough. I just want a better shot. Are the shots I have bad? Well, yeah, not really. I've taken some pretty cool shots and I've had some pretty amazing experiences, but you know, I just need better. So what makes a better shot? Well, I'm glad you asked, so let's back up a little bit. A few days ago, I was re-listening to one of my favorite podcasts, Wild and Exposed. You can go check it out. There's a link in my description. The guest, Mr. Stephen Kirkpatrick, said, well, he can say it better than I can. I'll let him say it. Um, often people ask, you know, what's, what's the problem with, with photos? And I said, well, sometimes, you know, everything is perfect except for one element. You know, you got the subject, but you don't have the background. You got the background, but you don't have the subject. You got the light. Did you get that? Subject, background, and light. That's all there is. Find a nice subject, make sure you have a nice background, and make sure you snap that shot in good light. As photographers, especially us crazy wildlife photographers, we're always in search of the perfect combination of subject, background, and light. So here we are again, photographing birds. Let's start with the subject. The thing with wildlife photography is this. Those birds, or any animal for that fact, they're gonna do exactly what they wanna do. You can't just wake up in the morning, give them a call and tell them where to meet you. Me, I have my ways of knowing what to look for and when to go looking. After all, like I said, eight years now, this isn't my first rodeo. So here's what I do, I check my books, I check the eBird alerts, but more importantly, I check Instagram, I check the page of my friends that live here in the area. Looks like my buddy Crispin here found some already. That's a nice shot there, brother. So here he is, the Lazuli Bunting. Huh, I photographed these guys for the first time about three years ago now when we moved to Idaho. They're beautiful little birds, quite abundant in the foothills and can be found in those weedy waste areas feeding on grasshoppers and other insects. I love, absolutely love photographing these birds. I got a few good images last year, but that was last year. Today's a new day. Like I said, enough is never enough. Perhaps today I'll get that once in a lifetime shot. You know, maybe today's the day. So let's talk about background. What makes a good background? I'm kind of partial to infinite green or brown or whatever really. Just not white or blue or even gray. Definitely not gray. But this is art, and there are certainly exceptions. Not to mention, I may be alone in my taste. Perhaps white, gray, and blue, they're great backgrounds. Yeah, that's art. Just tricky. Before we move off subject and background, though, there is one caveat. With birds especially. The perch is part of the subject. Oh yeah, man, I'm telling you, nothing sets an image off like a nice stick. Or a utility sign. You get the point. I like this background. I especially like that perch. So come on, bird, just land right there. All right, what about light? Early morning and late afternoon are best, right? That's what all the professionals will tell you. I do like to see those long shadows, but sometimes I like a little backlighting. Heck, sometimes I like it when it's high noon. Well, I mean, not really. I never like it when it's high noon. But there you go, that's art, right? Subjective, so subjective. My thought is this, there's no such thing as bad light. There's just different light. But that's a whole nother subject and we'll save that for another video. For now, we wait. 
We wait for him to get closer and hopefully hop up on that perch. Come on, man. Come on, get closer. <sighs> well, it looks like I need to move. Yeah, still nothing. Maybe I should try my SUV as a blind. That's worked in the past. A guy standing out in the field, now that's a threat. But a guy sitting in a 4,000 pound SUV, no threat at all. All right, we're getting something now, but still not good enough. Need better. Maybe time to move again. Now wait, this could be something. Come on, come on, birdie. A little closer. Yeah, it looks like he's on to me. Here's the thing, this guy can do this all day. Me, on the other hand, well, I've got laundry to do. Plus, I gotta edge my driveway. And the light's getting bad. Eight years, eight years I've been playing this game. Sometimes I'll walk away with that magical feeling, that feeling that I've witnessed something special or even amazing. Other times, I leave a little wanting. You know, like I said, enough is never enough. Today, well, you know, things aren't working out the way I planned. But I'll keep trying. Maybe I'll load the car up again this evening, possibly tomorrow. And I'm sure there'll be some time next weekend. Plus, there's always the afternoons. I mean, I can leave work and photograph things in the afternoon. Look, I'm looking for a once-in-a-lifetime shot. And, well, you know, I've got a lifetime to pull it off. So remember, guys and girls, there are only three things you need to worry about. Subject, background, and light. <laughs>